Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said on this motion, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think the members, the government side, they've understood what we are doing. I think the member for Chosel on the all we also understood where we are going, where we are heading, where we are heading with that, with that um, process, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's a, it's a process that is, is in, involving a three-stage process. One, Mr. Speaker, we started with the with relooking, remodeling the village tourism concept to the community, community tourism concept, which was a pullback from the Nature Heritage Tourism Program. With that, Mr. Speaker, you are bringing in locals, indigenous people, indigenous businesses into the tourism sector. Launch, Mr. Speaker, and ready to go. Then there was an introduction of the Youth Economy Agency, the YE. The member for Euford North, for Castries, for Castries North, put the, the, the concept in its proper perspective, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's not a matter of having windows for young people. It's a matter of making it, giving a part of the economic superstructure for young people. I mean, Mr. Speaker, it's a, it's sometimes it's a, it's a concept that people find difficult to understand. Why are you doing that? And I even know that some people are skeptical about what's, what it's all about, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's about a concept that allows young people to excel in what they like. Too many times we, can, we believe we can choose for young people and tell them to go and work in a hotel or go and work in a call center or believing that that is the employment that they want. Nothing wrong in, in these, um, these forms of employment. But basically, it's part of the economic, economic sphere where young people will be able to convert their hobbies into entrepreneurship and their skills into businesses by getting help with finance, mentoring and marketing. Also training, Mr. Speaker. We launched, we passed the legislation. It's out there for public scrutiny and public discussion. Cabinet yesterday appointed a chairman for the youth, um, the youth economy agency, the year. The chairman is a businessman who's worked in, in several areas. He's also a marketing and technical person, so he will help in shaping the vision. This week we are having a strategic meeting for the members of the board. We have not recruited any staff members as yet. Um, the minister, the member for Shoza is correct. Out of our budget, we've said that only 20% can be spent on administrative expenses. And that is to, we are, Getting, getting the structure together, getting the strategic plan together, putting the staff in the mindset where they can know what we're doing. We're not in a hurry to launch and, 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 and collapse. Um, we have a problem with office space, and that discussion which the member for Castries Central brought up this morning is a very interesting discussion on office space. Um, we We'll speak about that later, Mr. Speaker. So we hope in January to get to move, get out of our first loans, our first grants, and launch our year in a big way, Mr. Speaker. Um, but today we did a micro, small, micro SME enterprises, Mr. Speaker, which I know is a passion of the Minister for Commerce. But Mr. Speaker, when we configured the ministries, People were wondering, why did we put cooperatives in the Ministry of Commerce? But it was a vision that cooperatives are businesses. It was a vision that says that cooperatives don't have to be put in a place where the people involved do not 
think that they are businesses. So we, we put commerce together with cooperatives and business growth and business development, Mr. Speaker. So this bill today, this resolution today, Mr. Speaker, is going to be impactful in that the ministry, and I was already congratulating the minister and, and, and her staff, the ministry has set the groundwork for the, the, for the success of that enterprise. They have held a number of groundings with business people in the community. <coughs> so you go in there and you speak to people. You don't stay in your office and believe you know what is happening to small business. You don't know. You, you don't know what it is, what is happening to small business. Mr. Speaker, in one of my future, in one of my past lives, when I used to earn some money, I did a consultancy they, and my, my, my friend from Vivot South will not, will, will I, let, 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 let me tell him, I was not one of these technocrats. I, I, I did a consultancy for the Caribbean Development Bank on, uh, on costing for small business, Mr. Speaker. And incidentally, last night, as, as, when I was preparing, I was looking to my documents and I saw my letters of engagement when I was given the consultancy for the CDB. And part of that consultancy was to look at the costing systems of small businesses. And, I, and in some of the work that we did, we found out that small businesses, sometimes it is better for somebody to rent their space in several the business from the space. Sometimes it's better. And that, and that is why it was important for the minister to have these groundings. Then we have these training sessions. We have them to understand that sales are not profit. We have them to understand that a business can be a hobby, but a hobby must, must be a business if you want to make money. And we did, and the minister built that up. And I know some, some, when I heard somewhere, oh yeah, you're all talking about the economy. What's happening there? What's happening there is we are preparing. We are preparing so we can launch properly and we cannot flop in midair. And that is the difference. And that's what the minister is doing. So, Ms. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy that we are getting this money. I hope that is disbursed with alacrity. I hope that the, it gets to the, the people that they want. I know the minister is a certified accountant and someone who will ensure that there is transparency and accountability which the bank would ask for. So it is it's a very good day, Mr. Speaker. It shows what the government is doing. We started by borrowing to assist vulnerable people. People. The economy cannot survive if there are no people. All economies must be for people. And the supply side economics as in practice has failed. The idea of supply side economics, that has failed. It has failed. You cannot believe that you can, people will, will wait until your businesses survive for them to improve their, their, their quality of life. You have to assist them. And that's what we did this morning with the vulnerable, with the safety nets for vulnerable people. That's what we did this morning. And this afternoon, we are saying to those who have, we are saying to those who have the business document, we are saying to those who have the business ideas, we are saying to those who want to work for themselves. We are saying to those who have their families to bring up, but they still want to earn a living, that here is an opportunity where you can get some support. Here is the opportunity where you can create employment for yourself and create, an em create employment for a few other people. And we're doing that with the SMEs, with the SME legislation resolution that we are passing is happening. So it's coming together, Mrs. Mrs. It's coming together, Mrs. Speaker. And what, what makes me happy is that the, the, the proposals in the manifesto 
and the budget. We are ticking them out one by one. We are ticking them off one by one. We are ticking them off. In the first 18 months, with COVID, with Ukraine, Russia, we are ticking them off one by one. And when I present the, the budget estimates in March, Mr. Speaker, you will see how we have not only ticked them out one by one, but with the help of the cabinet and the technocrats in the Ministry of, 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 of Finance, Mr. Speaker, we have, we have managed and nursed this economy. And with the, with the help of the people of St. Lucia, and I must tell you, Mr. Speaker, I must compliment the people of St. Lucia. I have been told that the people of St. Lucia now, they feel a new sense of belonging. They feel that the government is working in their interests. They feel that they will not be second-class citizens in their own country. They feel that if they produce, they will survive. They feel that their businesses will be allowed to make a profit. Investors are feeling now that the projects will come to, to see the light of day without having to meet a minister in his office quietly. They are seeing all that. They are seeing that the fear of victimization and the fear that if they do not go to a particular lawyer or if they do not go to a particular place, their incentive will never reach the cabinet. They are, that has stopped. That has stopped, Mr. Speaker. That has stopped. Everybody is a society where we strive for equality, a society where we strive for equity. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate the minister. I want to thank the, the staff of the Ministry of Commerce. And together, Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia, we will take St. Lucia to the next level. I thank you.